Hi guys, it's Luke here at TubeTastic Facts with another episode of It's a Matter of Facts. And this time I'll be taking a look at some of the weirdest and scariest unsolved mysteries with each one being given its own tube star rating out of five. First up on the list involves the mysterious deaths of nine experienced young Russian hikers found dead in a remote pass in the Ural Mountains back in 1959. Now this is something that has fascinated me for some time now, after reading a book called Dead Mountain by Donny Eicher, and I have been hooked ever since trying to get to grips with what actually happened. What's particularly creepy about this story is that even to this day, nobody knows how these individuals met their end, but several clues left from behind um, on that fateful night have led to many conspiracy theories that we will go on to discuss later in this video. All of the hikers that set out on what would eventually be a very perilous journey into the Russian wilderness were either students or graduates at the Ural Polytechnical Institute, and the expedition was led by 23-year-old engineering student and radio enthusiast Igor Dyatlov. Now Igor was also a very promising inventor in his spare time, and he even designed a radio and portable stove to be carried out on the expedition. Now the group started their journey in January and reached Ivdel City by train on January the 25th. From there they reached Vizai by a truck on January the 27th. Now Vizai was the last inhabited area to the north of the province of Sverdlovsk Oblast. On January the 28th Yuri Yefimovich Yudin had to return back because he was feeling sick. The rest of the nine members continued with their journey. Little did Yuri know at the time that his decision to turn around would end up saving his life. Unfortunately though for his friends, they were not to know of the dangers that lied up ahead. On January the 31st, the group stashed some surplus supplies in a wooden cabin to shed weight from their heavy luggage and settled down for the next day they headed out towards the pass when the weather conditions took a turn for the worst and visibility dropped um, to near zero conditions causing the group to change direction and head west away from the thicker forest towards Kolat Syakl which translated from Russian means dead mountain. The name alone is enough to give anyone the heebie-jeebies. Now Igor Dyatlov was expected to send a telegram back to his peers at the college on 12th of February upon returning back to safety with the other hikers, except no telegram was received. Now a few days passed by without anyone worrying too much as such delays were normal for expeditions of this kind. Now a total of eight days passed without any contact from Igor Dyatlov and the hikers worried family members pleaded for a rescue party consisting mostly of college students and volunteers to set out as quickly as possible. Not long after assembling this team, the Russian militia or military were instructed to join in the rescue attempt and when they finally reached Dead Mountain, found a badly damaged tents of the team. Quite shockingly, the rescue team found the campsite completely abandoned and tear marks to escape the tent cut from the inside out. Something had obviously spooked them into making a quick escape and absolutely, absolutely no time was spared to consider exiting the tent from the normal entrance as one would normally expect to do so. Now as if things couldn't seem any stranger, all of their belongings were left inside the tent as well as their footwear. This would have been absolutely shocking at the time as nobody in their right mind would leave the safety and shelter of a tent in the dead of night in minus zero conditions and just leave like that, with no belongings or supplies. In total, eight to nine sets of footprints made by people wearing only just socks or a single shoe were followed to the edge of a nearby woods located one and a half kilometers from the camp. They uncovered a very large cedar tree and underneath the remnants were a fire as well as two dead bodies dressed only in their underwear and without shoes on. Three more bodies were later found between the tree 
where the other two bodies were found and the campsite and the other four missing bodies were found exactly two months later by another search party buried under four meters of snow. Now before the four bodies had even been dug out from the icy cold snow, a coronary report had been carried out and ruled all nine deaths as being caused by hypothermia. This would normally be perfectly reasonable um, as an explanation for anyone that has died in the cold, except strange injuries to some of the bodies left further clues as to what might have happened. A small crack was found on one of the earlier hikers skulls but was quickly, quickly discounted as being a cause of death. Of the four corpses removed from underneath the uh, um, snow, three out of the four displayed severe fatal injuries such as chest and skull fractures compared to those you'd expect to see in a high-speed car crash. Now arguably, the most suspect of all of the corpses belonged to Yud Miller Jubinina, whose eyes, tongue, part of her skull, facial tissue and lips were completely missing. A theory into the deaths of the four snow-covered hikers pointed at members of the native Mountsi tribe, but there were no signs of struggle or hand-to-hand -hand combat found anywhere, and this can seemingly be ruled out. Some suggest that an avalanche was responsible, but was later discarded after footprints were found leading back to the tents and there were no signs of an avalanche damage to the footprints. Now some theorists have pointed strangely the Yeti or Bigfoot and he, as the impact caused to the skull and chest were not like anything humanly possible. Strange lights in the sky or orbs were also seen spotted around the time of the disappearance, obviously sparking a flurry of UFO theories. But also towards a government cover-up as the Russian military might have had allegedly been testing parachute mines and secret weapons in the area um, of the disappearances. Some even claim that the whole campsite was staged by the Russian military as the tents were apparently incorrectly erected as if done in a hurry and not something you would expect to see such experienced hikers um, such as the likes of Igor Dyatlov doing. Even to this day, the families of the victims still don't have closure of what happened to their loved ones. And in February 2009, CNN reported that Russia had reopened for the Atlov Pass case 60 years on to try and finally get to the bottom of what happened. And I for one hope that new evidence is brought to light and this case is solved once and for all, however optimistic that may seem. I'm going to give these facts an impressive four and a half star tube rating out of five due to the fact that there are many pieces to this atro atrocity still yet to be uncovered. I highly recommend that you look into this further as though maybe the real answer is out there somewhere. Possibly the Russian government knows and got there before to fake the scene and make it look like an accident. Next on the list is arguably one of the weirdest maritime unsolved mysteries in the world today and has shades of similarity to the one above except the whole entire crew completely vanished off the radar and no bodies were ever found anywhere near the boat. The Mary Celeste was an American merchant vessel and was found floating in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean with nobody on board on December 5th 1872. If something like this happened in a modern day, it wouldn't be considered as strange due to the amount of shipping lanes that pass through this sea. The crew could easily jump aboard a passing vessel. In 1872, you were far less more likely to meet other vessels than today, making it incredibly weird. The lifeboats were apparently missing, but the inside of a ship was exactly as it was left and the table still laid for supper. Nobody ever did see the crew members ever again. Some theories about what happened point to water spouts, the kraken or giant squid, pirates, maybe even a mutiny. But nothing has ever been proved. Now I'm going to give this fact a four star tube rating as it's something that has scared me even as a little boy after watching an old episode of cartoon mystery hunter Johnny Quest. I'm not sure if any of you remember him. Another scary disappearance, shade similar to the Mary Celeste except on land, is that of the lost colony of Roanoke. 
Roanoke Island, based just off the coast of North Carolina, was a late 16th century attempt by Queen Elizabeth I, the daughter of the former British monarch king, Henry VIII, to set up a permanent British settlement in North America. Founded by Sir Walter Raleigh, who was held in high regard by Her Majesty and led by Englishman John White, whose family also lived on the island. One day, White decided to make the voyage back across the Atlantic to Britain to stock up on much needed supplies. Upon returning to Reanoke Island, things weren't quite as they seemed. Much to his surprise, his wife, daughter and granddaughter, Virginia Dare, the first English-born child in the New World, had all but vanished without a trace. In fact, the entire colony had disappeared with them, and you can only imagine what was going through John's mind on that day. The only clue, so to speak, was a somewhat scary carving on a wooden post saying the word Croatoan. Many theories suggest that the family fled to nearby islands after growing wearisome and settled with Native American tribes. If you've ever watched the hit TV show American Horror Story, the Reanoke event actually inspired the whole of season 6 as well as season 2, episode 9 of Supernatural featuring the famous Winchester brothers Sam and Dean. Nobody knows even to this day what really happened to John White's family, but the word Croatoan or Croatan actually means is reference to a small native Indian tribe known more commonly today as the Lumbee, based in and around North and South Carolina. I love this story, it really captures the imagination as to what really happened and I am a huge fan of early American history, so I'm going to give this a respectable 4.5 star tube rating out of 5. I really hope you enjoyed this video and won't get too freaked out by what you have just heard. Please remember that this is not fiction, this really happened. Everything you heard here is factual. Please give this video a big like and comment down below what you think. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure you hit all of the notifications to never miss a video or an episode of ours um, of It's A Matter of Facts. Thank you for watching. Stay safe out there, and as always, stay tubetastic, folks.